Simone and Damien have been involved with NQ Dry Tropics for a number of years now and they've been doing a lot of water quality projects with us. Joining up to the Reefwise Grazing Project for them seemed like it would help them achieve or value add to their big goals for what they wanted to do. In the basalt country north of Charters Towers, we do see the preferential grazing of cattle, how that is taking away our stronger 3P grass species from landscapes and leaving either bare ground or just annuals returning to those areas. Particularly on Basalt River, they have some really beautiful pockets of black soil country and black soil country is very much preferentially grazed by domestic livestock. Through the grass project, we were able to identify that the hot spots in worst condition for the Lyons family were those black soil areas. Around about 6,000 hectares was split into four paddocks and in each paddock there was a mixture of both black basalt and red basalt country. The Lyons themselves were able to then use their skills in forage budgeting and their ability to be able to monitor and manage the grazing management in those four new paddocks to really protect the ground cover on those black soil flats, especially at the end of the dry season. Normally we'd see those black soil flats with about 10% ground cover on them at the end of September, start of October. And they've, within 12 months, they'd actually improved the end of dry season ground cover on those black soil flats to about 50%. Their long-term aim is to get those black soil flats at the end of the dry season to have more than 70% ground cover and they'd really like to see a big strong transition towards deep rooted perennial plants on those black soil flats. So this used to be a black soil flat, uh, it's the ice cream country for the cattle and traditionally for us this has always been bears. But because the cattle prefer to graze on it, um, it's always the first grazed off and very unproductive because the grass plants are, are grazed out of existence and it fills with weeds. We've taken the cattle out and just brought a lot of rest in and, and more frequent moves. More of a rotational graze or a time graze sort of system in place. The species diversity that you see here isn't great. By continuing this process, the species diversity will improve. But for now, there is ground cover and we're holding the soil in place and we've got cover on it which, can, which will hold some of the moisture in place for longer into the dry season and keep the grass green. But yeah, there's a lot of cooch which, which is great ground cover, probably isn't the most desirable pasture species, but it's better than what it was and it's, it's a stepping stone. If I had to pick two really crucial things that have sort of been the basis of, of our change and our improvement, um, the first one is definitely mobbing the cattle together and grazing only about 20 to 25 percent of the property at once and you know divisional fencing so that we can put a larger mob in a smaller area to graze that area more evenly while the other areas are having a rest. The other probably more important factor has been doing a pasture budget every year. Yeah. Um, it's just so crucial if we only did one piece of work in the year um, doing that pasture budget is so important. Um, that takes a lot of the emotion out of making decisions because you don't have that grass available or if you do well then you can have the opportunity purchases or adjustment purchases opportunities and it's all done six months three months before you run out of any feed material so there is a, a grass estimate done in April or May depending on the wet season but then we'll sort of go back around um, July August after the winter time and just see how the country's going after winter, has it faded faster or have we done our ground checks properly? So it's the second truth again. We've been trained and are now quite familiar at using estimating stock days per hectare. And I think when you start talking in the language of stock days per hectare, you are more taking into account what's edible, what's nutritious, what you want to leave as ground cover. So really that it becomes a vision in your head of when the paddock is finished, when you've still got a good healthy tussock base and you've harvested the leaf off it, you've got good ground cover, what we want our pasture to respond as quickly as possible when we get rainfall and for our soil to absorb as much of that water as possible. We basically had cattle in every, most if not every paddock on the place and there was a lot 
of bare ground, especially the black soil flats at the end of the dry season. We set a fairly, what we thought was a high aim to probably only have cattle on about 25% of the place at any one time and the rest of the place spelling. We've gradually just work towards dividing some paddocks up, which gives us more paddocks to put the cattle in and making the mobs a bit bigger and then resting the pasture as much as we can, which is how this has come about. And maybe one or two grazers in the wet season, but that spelling in the wet season allows more plants to germinate. It allows them to grow and get some growth so that when the cattle do come in and graze, they can still photosynthesize. We installed monitoring sites with the landholders, took photos and did um, land condition assessments around each of those sites so that we really have a baseline to look at tracking change over time, actual on-ground change with pasture composition and ground cover and from a satellite perspective how that land is actually shifting towards, I, I suppose, a better condition. What's more important to us through our monitoring program is that graziers are able to see that the changes that they're implementing are able to have a positive benefit on their farm so that they can either grow more grass every year or they can grow greener grass for longer throughout the year because they've got better soils to hold that moisture or that they're able to graze cattle for a little bit longer or they're able to put um, more weight on cattle more quickly. You'll lose or gain tens of thousands of dollars by not monitoring if something goes unmonitored and you've left cattle in a paddock too long. You can lose condition pretty quickly if you've got a bigger mob in a smaller area than you're used to. But, you know, we found that doing that pasture budget is a really good way to prevent that from happening because you're saying up front, we've got this many stock days, we've got this many stock, the cattle should be in here for three weeks, we'll come and check it in two, right on calendar, check it in two, move them in three. Um, and most of the time, like I said, you come back and go, actually, we can probably get another week out of this. So if we leave a reserve in the paddock for us, that gives us so many different ways to jump, so we're not limited or restricted by what happens season-wise. We can make the choices early, and it's up to us to make the choices. And we're not relying on the rain, and we're not uh, relying on anyone else but ourselves, because we've done the, the grass monitoring properly.